Here we are, the final update of Dying Light 2 for 2023. This is it, the end of the line after another 12 months of continued support. We are ending the year with the Winter Tales update. Quite frankly, I think this is one of the best updates and events added into the game so far. This event introduced Baka once again with a whole new slew of bounties, rewards, gifts, and plenty more to keep players busy. New zombie variants were added into the game. We of course had holiday inspired zombies with Christmas hats, new spitters, elemental biter gas tanks and a new goon variant what's also awesome is that Teclan responded to criticism from last year's holiday event by adding in snow the big thing that the community wanted last year was indeed snow it was found in the game files that a snow version of villador actually existed they updated the zombies to be holiday themed even added snowballs into the game it came out there was no snow it looked goofy as it was an easy home run for them to add in snow into the game, and they completely missed the mark last year. But that's not the case here. The snow in Dying Light 2 is actually incredible. I, I love it. I mean, Teclan loves it so much that they made it snow inside. <laughs> I am officially petitioning for Snow to stay full-time into this game. No more part-time work for you. Comment down below if you agree. Teclan also added in Dying Light 1 inspired Santa airdrops, where you can go, you send a letter out to Santa, and then an airdrop drops off a nice Christmas crate for you to go and get. It's guarded by a bunch of infected, and I love it so much. It's honestly one of my favorite aspects of this event, but more on that later. They also added in a new weapon, which was a throwable axe, which if you've ever played God of War on PS4 or PS5, it's essentially the Leviathan axe. You ever played that game? Fun game. But the axe, you chuck that bitch and it will come back to you no matter what. It's like a boomerang. You throw it at a zombie, here it comes. You go into an elevator, chuck it down, and here it comes. You can go to the top of the VNC tower, throw it, and it will find a way back to you. You can even go, throw it, pause the game, fast travel somewhere, and it will come back to you. Eventually. Oh my god, it came back! Yeah. Are you kidding? Honestly, for me, once I unlocked this weapon, it really elevated my gameplay experience and my overall thoughts with this event. I was actually thoroughly enjoying it and literally maxed out all of the bounties that Baka had. That is something I don't do anymore. Most of the events in Dying Light 2 now, they lose me quite quickly and I just never fully complete it. My participation in these events has substantially decreased over time because of lack of exciting content. So why was this event different? Because on the surface, it does sound like more of the same, which, which it is, it absolutely is. Honestly, it's more bounties and a few challenges. But why did I enjoy this one more than let's say, the Walking Dead event? And I know the answer. This answer is exactly how I think Dying Light 2 and Teclan should do their events moving forward. It is sort of like the key and secrets to success that I'm about to unlock for Teclan here. I think because they paired this event alongside an update that introduced new content and requests from the community it received so much more praise than if it didn't and rightfully so in addition to everything we've mentioned so far winter tales was honestly like a mini community update that added in so many awesome additions pole arms now exist in the game it's so goddamn brutal and it's honestly ridiculous how gory this weapon can get but before we do proceed let's get a quick message from our sponsor ladies and gentlemen we decided to partner up with HelloFresh. For those unaware HelloFresh delivers meal kits with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes directly to your doorstep with everything that you need. And with the new year coming whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less HelloFresh is here to help. To get a little personal I used to be this super unfit unhealthy whip who was ranging in all sorts of sizes. I didn't really care about fitness and, and wellness to be honest with you and and a large part of this transformation was dieting and eating healthy and HelloFresh really helped me achieve that. I literally have a book of probably like a hundred different recipes that I've had over the years that I actually love from using HelloFresh and there's still stuff that I cook to this day. And since we're going into the new year, everyone is looking to revamp their eating habits and start the year on the right track. I seriously cannot recommend them enough. The one that we're cooking in this video is the roasted garlic and zucchini flatbread. That thing, so delicious. 
Mwah! Chef's kiss. And if you like what you see, you like what you hear, start out with HelloFresh today. Click the link in the description or use my code. And if you do so, you'll get a free breakfast for life. That's right. One breakfast item per box while you have an active subscription. Again, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And with all that said, let's get back to it now. They also added in new throwable weapons such as explosive throwing knives and ninja stars that I'm forgetting the name of shuriken. They also added in nocturnal weapons, which which, full transparency, I haven't dived too much into them, but they are glow-in-the-dark weapons that have unique abilities. They are incredibly powerful at the cost of your immunity during the nighttime, so you get these high damage weapons, but every time you slay an enemy, that timer decreases. And then on top of all this, they made Night Runner tools available in New Game Plus right from the very beginning. They also enabled cross-gen saves for the PS5 for now. There were also some little requests such as PC players now having the option to key bind the expert grappling hook. That's a huge quality of life improvement right there. The shield from bloody ties is also accessible now as a blueprint from the craftmaster. So you can go ahead, unlock that bitch. You can also dismantle it too. They also added in new finishers into the game, which uh, that's where the butt section of this video comes into play but more on that later. This was overall a very positive update, and I'm actually really excited to dive more into certain components on why it works so well and how it contributes to the overall health of the game long term. So let's speak about the new content being added in. I want to start with the new weapons, pole arms. By heading over to the hunter agent and leveling her up, you can easily get your hands on the new weapon added into the game. You can also find blueprints spread across the open world, and I have to say that the brutality and excitement of this new weapon in Dying Light 2 is quite remarkable. It's immensely satisfying. It brings a new sense of fulfillment to the game's weapon arsenal. And I hope they continue to expand on the game's weapon options available to use throughout the future. Which, spoiler alert, they are. Remember, we still have guns coming within the next one month, actually. Assuming that they stay on top of the timelines presented in the recent roadmap. Strangely enough, it now feels like the game is starting to nail that modern Dark Ages aesthetic that it aimed for in the beginning of all of its marketing. The introduction of these medieval-style weapons seamlessly complements the world of Dying Light 2 and the inclusion of it adds a refreshing layer to the gameplay, offering players fresh tools and toys to experiment with during the Winter Tales event. Snowballs are hilarious to spam on your enemies and watch them freeze. The Leviathan-inspired axe in Dying Light 2 became a personal favorite of mine as I found myself investing a significant amount of time simply going and just hurling this thing at zombies. Almost two hours of me just doing this. What makes it stand out is its uniqueness. It's not bound by the excessive need from Teclan for this weapon to be perfectly balanced. It's quite the opposite. Set. Instead, it's a refreshing addition that prioritizes fun and engagement. What a wild thing! This weapon offers players the liberty to experiment and celebrate in their actions, injecting an extra dose of delight into Dying Light 2. Like honestly, I think we just need a whole new set of boomerang weapons added into the game because of how enjoyable this really was for me. I think they got something cooking there. But due to all these new additions, in a way, incentivizes the players to utilize them to complete bounties and also earn rewards, making the update's alignment with the event a brilliant choice. Choice, and I hope that Techland continues this trend. If you add new and exciting content while you have an event going on, people are going to play the event to try out the new content. The community hit the global goal for this event in like three days, where like previous event, it's always a struggle to go and hit the community goal. It's always a struggle to get across that finish line. But with this one, that wasn't an issue. We blew past it quite quickly. And looking at their existing roadmap, the upcoming two-year anniversary event is scheduled for around February 4th with additional features like co-op missions, tower raids, and guns slated to be released by February. Combining all of these elements into one giant update and event would be the most optimal way for Tekken to truly excel and demonstrate their unwavering commitment to Dying Light 2 and the fan base. Pairing all of that together would honestly be like a like a mini love letter to fans of the series. Raids, guns, new events, all in one massive update as a huge thank you. What would be a slam dunk? Will they do it? I don't know. <clears throat> 
Oh my god, the beard is getting in my face. But let's go ahead and take a step back from everything, okay? And let's go ahead and discuss the one thing that I really loved about this event that I mentioned earlier. The airdrops, and also... Oh, 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 I don't know what that was, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what that was. I don't know what overcame me there. And also, the Christmas presents. Now, part of the reason this worked very well could be because of nostalgia and seeing these airdrops making a return in Dying Light 2 kind of made me giddy with excitement, so I may be a little bit biased here. I was kind of overjoyed each time one of these airdrops was on the way. For those unaware, in order to summon these, you need to level up Baka, and each time you do so, you get a letter that you can go and bring to Santa Claus. He comes flying in, dropping the goodies, and you can see it marked as a waypoint, and also by looking at the giant Christmas tree marker that's in front of you. In the past, I've criticized Teclan for events that seemed either too safe or lacked effort, where participating felt quite boring and mundane. Comparatively, the Winter Tales event stands out as a refreshing departure from this trend. The developers have evidently invested extra time and attention to detail in crafting this event. It's quite clear to me that they aim to excel here, and the content offered reflects a genuine collaboration of creativity and effort than compared to what we've gotten in the past. One thing I really appreciated as well was the presence, so the main global goal and community goal was to kill naughty infected and loot them for presents each present when unboxed gave you a good chunk of goodies ranging from weapons to loot to outfits and it seemed like tech one was overly generous here which i'm vastly grateful for you don't see them doing that <laughs> as much anymore and now it's time for the butt section in this video well a little bit of a clickbait not gonna lie okay back to it the butt why am i saying this it's about the finishers i like them they added in new ones into dying light 2 that involved i don't know squeezing the eyes out of zombies until they die and some of the new ones they get so gory you can chop off heads you can slice off their <laughs> because you keep cutting and slice <laughs> an m-rated game i i don't know and it's not banned you probably didn't get any of that thank you youtube but in short a new set of finishers were added in they also adjusted it so that you now have a chance to perform a finisher after successfully performing a perfect dodge parry x-ray attack and even when you release yourself from a biter grab which <coughs> which still happens way too often they are all awesome additions and this was something that we discussed on this channel and many people in the community have been echoing so seeing our feedback being implemented is amazing. It's great. Thank you, Techland. I will say it's still a little bit difficult to trigger finishers for endgame players. It is easier and better, but I'm still running into an issue where I just wipe a zombie because of how powerful I am so far into this game right now. Dead Island 2 does their finishers by charging up their attacks, and when you release, you perform it, and if they have little health, it will wipe them. If not, they still perform it, and then they're alive. Not sure if this is a viable solution. Could be like a copy and paste your homework situation here, if Tech One went that way, but I still think that finishers need a closer look before they are perfected. They're almost there. It's gotten a bit better, but it needs a bit more fine tuning and will be in a great place for them. But anyways, my friends, that is everything that I have to say today. Everything I wanted to state about the new update. If you were curious about what's in here, we have uh, some almond milk. We have some boiled rice in a bag. And then we also have some whey protein. That's everything that I had to say about the final update for 2023 with Dying Light 2. And I wish you all a happy holidays and, and a great new year. And I'm quite excited to see what we come up with in this new year. I do have a video that will talk about my, my channel and what I'm planning on for the new year. You can find that link down below in the description. But my friends, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, and have a wonderful day. See you later. Bye-bye.